to Grandma Bee's Busy Life. I'm Brenda and I'm here with Braxton mm -hmm. at Braxton's house. We are here at his house because we are making gluten-free bread and I don't want to make gluten-free bread at my house because I don't want it to get cross-contaminated. So we're here at Auntie Kim's, Braxton's mom's mm -hmm. house. Well, Braxton's house. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? Hi. <laughs> you want to tell him something about you? What, what's your favorite thing to do? Play hockey. What position do you play? Goalie. Are you good at it? Uh-huh. He's really good. In fact, someone even said that he is the best seven-year-old goalie in the state. <laughs> I'm biased and I believe that, but I didn't say it. So I think it's probably true. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to make gluten-free bread today. I want you to notice the flowers. These are the flowers that Scarlett insisted that Auntie Kim had. So. They are looking pretty. Make sure you help Grandma be out and, make, and hit the subscribe button and like it. And give us a thumbs up. Thank you. All right, let's get started. This is Kim. She was in my Ibotta video with me and she does most of my filming. I've got Josh, my son, behind the camera today. And we're going to start with one and a half cups I can't read it. I need my glasses. It is one and a half cups of warm okay. water. <laughs> um, the thing about gluten-free is the cross-contamination is extremely high in homes that don't need it. Um, I have had celiacs for almost three years. Um, it's been a very large learning curve. So that's why we're here and not at Grandma B's because she doesn't do gluten-free unless I'm coming for dinner. <laughs> so as we said, we're starting with warm. Two, one and a half cups of warm water. And then you need two and a half teaspoons of yeast. One packet of yeast is two and a half teaspoons. So you can just buy one packet of yeast. This calls for instant yeast. I wouldn't veer from that. We haven't used the active dry yeast, but the instant yeast works. I like to buy it in the big brick. It's solid right now because it's vacuum sealed, but when you open it, it is just loose granules just like this. And if you keep this, once it's open, if you keep it in an airtight container in the freezer, it'll last for a very, very long time, and it's much cheaper this way. All right. And, then, and also to this, we're adding three tablespoons of sugar. And this is just going to sit and do its magic while we get the rest of the ingredients ready. Oh, I made a mess. All right, we're going to start with three cups of gluten-free flour. And is, that, is this what's in here too? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and measure. So why are you using, it calls for Bob's Red Mill. Why are you using this instead? Um, I use just Great Value because it's way less expensive. Um, and it works just the same. You can use whatever flour you'd like. Um, that's obviously gluten-free. Bob's Red Mill I hear is really great. Um, but I just... That was not three cups. It was close. It, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just like it being gluten free as expensive as it is. So I try to find the less expensive versions of things that I can so that I save some money. Um, also, I have noticed with measuring flour, especially gluten free, free flour, is that you need to spoon it into the cup and then level it. If you pack it in, it just becomes too dense or it's too much flour per liquid because it's rice flour and potato starch and things like that. So it sucks in more liquid. Um, so you have to not pack your flour in as much. And that's actually true for all flours. If you scoop it up, it packs it in and then you end up with too dense of a product. So that's true with any flour. Okay, then we have, you'll have to read it for me. <laughs> One and a half teaspoons of xanthan gum. It is expensive. But the xanthan gum is what is used in gluten-free baking to make it the texture of normal bread. It gives it that elasticity that you're not building because you're not forming any gluten bonds. I'm like the annoying child in the kitchen. <laughs> She's all focused and I'm playing with things. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then four teaspoons of baking powder. And this is gluten-free baking powder and I know it's gluten-free because it says it on the container. Um, there are some that aren't. Everything that you're buying, you need to make sure that it says gluten-free on it or has a claim that it's gluten-free. There's also gluten-free certified 
labels that be on things. Um, and if it says that, you're pretty safe. Um, <laughs> How am I going to measure? You don't. Camera cut off. All Kim did was just ground a little bit of salt into our dry ingredients and whisked it up. So now we're going to do the wet ingredients. Okay, so for this, you need, need two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Um, it calls to use a stand mixer. I'm assuming you could do it without, but it does need to whisk for about three minutes to get that consistency that you're looking for. So you're either so, going to build muscles or use a mixer. So that's two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and a quarter cup of olive oil and two eggs. All right. Now she's got a paddle mixer out. When I make bread, I always use the dough hook, but she said she always uses the paddle attachment. Because you're not forming any gluten, so the hook doesn't mix it well. And so oh, when you're making a normal sense. gluten bread, it becomes a, a ball around the hook. And in this, it doesn't. It's more of like a donut dough of sorts, that it's sticky and Maybe it's... like a biscuit dough? Right. It's not a bread consistency. Because it's not going to build those stretchy, glutinous strands because it's gluten free, obviously. Okay, let's go. So we're just mixing up these eggs just enough to break them down and get the oil and vinegar all mixed together. And while she's doing that, I'll talk a little louder. Look at it. Look at our yeast. Look how foamy it is. Look at that. Make sure you use a big container because look how much it rose. All right, and that's pretty much mixed through. So we're going to add the yeast. It's so different, me being on this side of the mixer and you on that side. <laughs> and we're just giving that just a little bit of a spin just to get it all incorporated. So now we're just gonna add the flour, well, all the dry ingredients. And we're doing it on a low speed and just incorporating it slowly so that you don't poof flour everywhere. And poofed is the new word in the Webb household because our youngest son lost his tooth, his very first tooth, he's five, and I made a video and he says, well, I twisted it and poofed, it came out. That's Brady and Brady says the funniest things. Our family calls them Bradyisms because he says the funniest things. Okay, yeah, it looks a lot like a biscuit though. Yes, so right now as it's incorporating, once it's fully incorporated, we're gonna kick up the speed to medium high and let it just mix for about three minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna kick it up. And I generally set a timer because I'm not. How long does it have to mix? About three minutes. Okay, so we've mixed for three minutes. This is what it looks like. It is more, like Grandma B said, a biscuit dough. It is not going to pull away from the sides of the bowl. It's not gonna stick to the, you know, it's not just gonna form one big ball of dough. So we grease the pan with a gluten-free spray. Be careful, not all sprays are gluten-free. We figured out the hard way. Yeah. Yes, the butter flavored spray, not gluten-free. And there might be others, always check. Yes. So this is what the dough looks like, again, after it's been mixed. And we're gonna just plop it into this pan. And you do have to kind of spread it out with the spatula because it doesn't, it won't ooze down into all of the spaces. All right, so you're gonna spread that out. I'll go take care of this. Okay, and I always spray my spatula when I'm getting ready to spread the dough because as you can see, it's very sticky and it sticks to the spatula all the time. And I don't want it to necessarily look like this. <laughs> Because, yes, with gluten-free, it does Does like, nobody likes ugly bread? No one likes ugly bread. No, everyone likes rainbow bread that Grandma B makes. I'll link the video in the description box. <laughs> um, but, yes, like Grandma B said, it doesn't, it doesn't move. It doesn't flatten out. You have to kind of coax it or else you'll have a funny-looking bread. Loaf. Yeah, it, it doesn't puff up and smooth out like a regular gluten bread does. So whatever shape it goes in, that's the shape it's going to come out. So here's what it is all spread out. This is what it looks like. We're going to cover it and let it rise. How long do we let it rise? Uh, 20 to 30 minutes. It's not going to rise like a regular gluten bread it, because it doesn't have gluten. It will rise a slight amount because of the yeast, 
So it won't double in size? No, it will not double. But and it will it, increase in size? Right, so okay. you just cover it with a damp paper towel and then I preheat the oven and by the time the oven's preheated, it's ready to go in. All right, go for it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It has puffed up a little bit, but you can see it hasn't come all the way to the top. Is it gonna rise more as it bakes? Yes. So it goes in the oven at 375 for 35 to 45 minutes. And Kim was saying that it gets dark on the top before it's fully baked. So she puts a tent of foil over it at about 30 minutes or so, when the top starts to get really brown. And You'll start smelling it as well. And when you start smelling it, it's starting to brown, which you can kind of gauge from there if you want to put a tent of aluminum foil on it or not. And then to test to see if it's done, you do kind of like you would do for a cake and you just stick a toothpick in and if it comes out wet, it's obviously not done yet. So we're just gonna bake it and we'll come back and show you what it looks like after. So the bread's done. It was in the oven for about 40 minutes. Um, so we're just gonna cut it and let you see what it looks like. And you can use this bread for anything you would use regular white bread for. You can make sandwiches, grilled cheese, uh, avocado toast. So I made garlic bread with this once. Um, you do need to be a little bit more careful with it because it does brown a little differently. <laughs> Still the camera. <laughs> Look how cool that is. I'm going to actually squish it a little so you can see it's nice and soft and fluffy. All right. <laughs> um, and I just did butter. Oh, I just did butter with some garlic powder and then lined it on a sheet and put it in the oven. I watched at the top of the butter didn't brown the way I thought it would. The underneath of the bread actually toasted instead of the top where the butter was. So if you are planning to do something like that, be mindful of that and watch it very closely because you don't want to burn your bread because that's gross. I don't know. I, I don't know if you've tried this, but I wonder if you buttered it both sides with the garlic butter and then just grilled it in a pan. It'd probably be better. It might be good. All right. I don't normally eat gluten free, but I'm going to, I already tasted the bread, but I'm going to taste it again. The texture is perfect. It is. It is a thicker bread. I feel like it's a little bit more dense than a normal white bread. Beautiful thing though is it is it does slice really, really well. It does. Let's do a price comparison. The two gluten-free breads that that Kim really likes at Walmart are five forty-six and six fourteen. Something like that. something like that. This will run you between three twenty-five and three fifty per loaf based on where you get your ingredients from. I looked on Amazon and I looked at Walmart and I found the cheapest way to buy them and then calculated it based on that. So it's still a great savings. It is a thicker bread. The ones at the grocery stores are fairly short and they're just... So this one's taller. It is much taller, yes. It's taller, it's just, it's just better in my opinion. So hands down, cheaper and better flavor than bread you can buy at the store. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, make sure you subscribe and my grandma be trying to get 100 subscribers in March. Awesome. Thank you, Braxton. Uh -huh. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> I got an ugly foosball. Oh, nice. I hope you have a great day. If you make this recipe, leave a comment. Let me know how it went and have a great day. We'll see you again soon.